a market that we cannot ignore. Aside from the fact that in less than two hours, President Trump will be making this jobs announcement at the White House, which may entail Foxconn, which is the big supplier and, and uh, the company that basically puts together the iPhones for Apple. Here's what we know. Earlier today, Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker tweeted, quote, major jobs announcement for Wisconsin today at the White House, leading to longtime speculation that manufacturing giant Foxconn, as I mentioned, would open this new factory in the Badger State. Uh, and speaking of creating jobs, in the meantime, Amazon is going on a hiring spree. The retailer is making its own big announcement that it plans to host what can only be described as a gigantic jobs fair next week. Write it down if you're interested. Amazon looking to fill 50,000 new positions at many of its big plants and warehouses in the United States. And, you know, President Trump has been very critical of billionaire Jeff Bezos of Amazon for the fact that he also owns the Washington Post, which has been relatively tough on the president. But should he be thanking Jeff Bezos for creating so many jobs to the floor show and our traders? And also joining us, John Hildenrath, because we can't forget the Federal Reserve, which kept rates pat, but also hinted about, you know, I don't know if it's that clear when we will start to see them draw down their big balance sheet. But to, to the markets first, gentlemen, and, and Teddy, we, we've already hit an all-time high for the Dow, all-time high for the S&P, the NASDAQ. S&P and NASDAQ are right there right now. What do you think this is about? Is it more the Fed? But they were already there this morning. Well, I think they didn't hear anything from the Fed that made the markets nervous. It was pretty much uh, uh, anticipated what they would say, which is basically they're on hold, uh, you know, usual Fed speak. So I don't think the Fed meeting really had any impact, at least in the very short term, on the markets. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, uh, the broader view, we're smack dab in the middle of the, this week and next week. We have a lot of earnings. Uh, today, it's, uh, the market really is all, the Dow certainly is all about Boeing. I mean, you took Boeing out of the Dow, we would actually be down on the day. Yeah. And in fact, the market internals are neutral to negative. Uh, but the bottom line is it's going to read good if we hold these levels uh, to the end of the day. And uh, most folks that are going to pick up their newspapers are just going to see the Dow is up, you know, a, a big, a, a nice right. fat percentage gain. And that's what they'll see. And, Tomorrow will be another day and more earnings and Facebook after the close. Okay. Thank you for clarifying because Boeing, of course, is the big floaty underneath the Dow right now. And, and it just had much better than expected uh, profits. But I, I just want to put this to, to Luke. And, and even with your oil mine, you know the market. If we see a record for the Dow today, I believe that would be the 27th of 2017. 27th record. The S&P, if it closes anywhere to the upside today, that would be the 29th record of 2017 and, and uh, the Nasdaq, the 44th record close. Does anything worry you about those numbers I've just thrown out? <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, a lot worries me. <laughs> uh, yeah, Liz, I mean, a lot worries me. I'm, but but uh, one thing I'll say about the Fed, I mean, once again, we get we get nothing from the Fed. Their metrics change all the time. The things they look at change. They're going to raise. This is like an abusive relationship, you know. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm going to, I'm not going to, yeah, and, right, and, right. and they never do it. So, you know, that's that's with the Fed. But where is someone supposed to go to get yield? The Fed is pushing people to stocks. It's pushing institutions to stock. Where are they going to get yield? If you're running a pension plan and you've got to meet eight and a half percent per year. Where are you going to Where are you going to go? You're not going to go into fixed income markets. You're okay. pushing into stocks. But, but John right? Hilton. So Rath, I'm worried he, about that. He, I'm worried that. Let, let me just let John Hilton Rath jump in here because you know the Fed better than anybody, and their worry right now that's kind of keeping them as as dragging through quicksand here is inflation dropping instead yeah. of rising. But what about what Luke just Might said? Be. Well, the inflation numbers have been very soft. The Fed has been waiting for years for inflation to get up to 2%, and we're not sustainably there. And because of that, they're moving very slowly on raising rates and drawing down their balance sheet. And I think there's a problem brewing here. You know, if you look back at the late 1990s, the Fed was very slow about raising interest rates. Inflation was lower than they expected. If you look back at the mid-2000s, Inflation was very low. The Fed was very slow and, pre and predictable about raising interest rates. In both of those cases, we got bubbles. You know, I think one of the things we're seeing now is the Fed 
is being so methodical with interest rates and so predictable. You know, the, the market yawns whenever they do anything, mm -hmm. and we could have the makings of, you know, complacency, which leads right. to the next bubble. I don't think we're at a bubble yet, but look, stocks are going up, you know, new records, 27 okay. times, you said. This could be the makings of a problem. Okay, listen, we've got to run, but to that end, I'm looking at the VIX right now at 9.52 <laughs> earlier today. It, it hit a level, a low of 8.83 that nobody's ever seen before. That means sheer complacency, John. You're, you're probably onto something there. Gentlemen, thank you very much.